Hey, what's up, Lightbolt Joe here. Today we are going to discuss Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. This came out in 1988. This is a direct sequel to the 1987 cult classic film, Hellraiser. So, um, Doug Bradley is referenced and credited as Pinhead in this movie. So now we figured it out. So he's only uh, lead Cenobite in the first film and Pinhead from now on throughout. So we actually get his origin story. We get that he was a general. He sought out the box. He found the box. Now he's in the labyrinth of hell within his pain and pleasure, but he becomes Pinhead. So it's interesting getting some origins on some of the Cenobites. And then we have this uh, doctor character who becomes a Cenobite, who becomes a new lead Cenobite and then kills all the Cenobites. But then the Cenobites are a part of that coffin thing, which pops up at the end. So then of course we know the Cenobites come back, but it's a matter of how do they come back? So this is a direct sequel. Kirsty Kirsty is uh, put into a psych ward. She is being evaluated. Her boyfriend's slash friend who she has the room with. Um, he's not in this, but he's referenced that the police officer just talked to him and he's free to go, but she has to have answers to just some questioning. Why, you know, murder throughout her entire family's house, stuff like that. Interesting. So the doctor that is evaluating her turns out to be an occultist and he has various boxes, various Hellraiser boxes that uh, himself um, to summon the Cenobites, but he uh, hears Christy her story that the mattress has to be dis destroyed, the mattress that Julia was killed on, because she can now come back through that. And so he uses it to sacrifice some, you know, patients and brings Julia back. And Julia is now on a killing spree to get her physical form back, much like how Frank was in the first film. So Frank is trapped in hell, and it's a very awkward, incestuous moment between him and his niece, um, which then she then takes advantage of and burns his hell so that way he is now tormented within hell instead of just on the pleasure aspect of hell so how did Kirsty get back into there well frank is pretending to be her father that he's trapped in hell he needs help and then she gets back to hell after solving the puzzle box but there's another not inmate but another patient within the the hospital uh tiffany and who's not, that's not actually her real name. They, should, they just call her Tiffany. And then when she starts to actually talk, she doesn't actually correct them, which is interesting. So uh, Tiffany is big into puzzles. She f finalizes and figures out the puzzle box. Cenobites come on behalf of the doctor. Uh, doctor becomes a Cenobite himself. All hell breaks loose haha, <laughs> within hell, within the labyrinth. And then Kirsty uh, and Tiffany face Julia, get her skin, deceive the Dr. Cenobite to then, you know, have him be ripped to shreds after the box turns into this pyramid spear thingy. It's interesting. I can't really describe it. But Tiffany figures out the puzzle. She solves the puzzle. They save the day. The hospital is closed and they all walk into the sunset. So it's interesting because this gives a finalization in regards to the part one and part two of this Kirsty story. And so what happens next? I don't remember the other Hellraiser films. I remember certain aspects. I don't remember. I remember there's a there's a, uh, a digital video game aspect at some point. I, I don't I don't remember, but I know that Pinhead's character does evolve with the times. But I I'm don't remember how he gets back to Cenobite form when we see him a part of the cube, uh, not the cube, the uh, the elongated cube, the rectangular coffin thing, which turns for the pain and pleasure bit. I don't, I don't remember the name of it. I genuinely don't remember the name of it. But this uh, this is just gory. It's creepy. It's cringy. It's, it brings that creepy, creepy feels to it, which is which is a good aspect of, of explaining, you know, what the purpose of these films were. It's, it's horror. Um, but it's more than... It's a psychological horror, but it's, it's gore horror as well. So it's, it's got the best of both worlds, the pain and pleasure aspect of it, best of, best of both worlds. On to that next review. Mahalo.